and welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, we have Jeff Schultz, he's an investment strategist over at ClearBridge Investments. We're going to take a look at trade concerns and what that could mean within the economic cycle. It's great to have you with us, Jeff. Great to be As back. As always. Now, behind us, let's talk about the risk recession risk dashboard that you have over at ClearBridge. Yeah, it's a dashboard that we put out that has done an excellent job of foreshadowing an upcoming recession. A group of 12 variables, and it's a stoplight analogy where green is good, yellow is caution, and red is bad. Uh, but heading into each one of the last recessions, it's been able to pick it up with remarkable accuracy. All right, so what are the readings that you're getting right now? Because we're a little bit late in the cycle here. We are late in the cycle, and we saw a deterioration across a number of variables in June, and we've moved the overall signal to yellow right now, which is signaling caution. We're not really sure if this is going to be a slowdown period akin to 1995, 1998, or 2015, or it's a little bit more sinister from a recessionary standpoint. But what we have done is we've increased the probabilities of recession over the next 12 months to 50%. The important takeaway, though, from the viewers is that usually when you go yellow, it doesn't mean it's the end of the market cycle. Markets continue to grind higher until we get closer and closer to that inflection point. Were there a couple of indicators that made it go into yellow? Is it around trade concerns? Why are you a little bit less optimistic? Yeah, so two indicators went from green to yellow over the course of the month. You have job sentiment, and you also have manufacturing PMI new orders. And those are our two soft survey data. We think these are directly being impacted by trade. And the thing that actually struck me as interesting is that our job sentiment measure, it's a conference board that we look at. And they look at number of participants that are saying jobs are hard to get versus jobs that are easy to find. And jobs that are hard to get jumped 4.6% last month. Put it in perspective, this 50 years worth of data set, that's the fifth largest jump in the series history, and the four larger jumps happen to coincide in the middle of a recession. So, you know, there's a record amount of job openings out there. The jobs print that we had last week was actually pretty strong, and this may be showing some signs that the cracks in the foundation that companies are less reluctant to hire that marginal employee because of the uncertainty that trade war is bringing. Right, it's, well, we're coming into earnings season as well, and I'm sure we'll get a good look into that. Uh, because I think it's going to be tougher for companies to offer guidance when they really don't know what the global trade picture is going to look like. Yeah, we would agree. Um, typically, earnings revisions uh, are the highest in May, June, and July uh, for next 12 months' mm -hmm. earnings. Uh, we think the second quarter earnings may be a reality that margins are being compressed due to higher wages and higher input costs. <laughs> Um, but also, um, I think guidance is going to be ratcheted down because of the uncertainty that's happening here. And also, a lot of companies are starting to try to move their supply chains out of China um, because it doesn't look like a resolution is on the horizon anytime soon. Right, and that's more complex than it sounds on paper. These are massive operations that need to be moved. It is. <laughs> and unfortunately, a lot of people would go to somewhere like Vietnam, but Vietnam is a much smaller country than the 1.4 billion people that China have. Uh, and this is the type of thing that takes some time. But if we don't get a trade resolution soon, mm -hmm. and, and, and if there isn't some sort of quick enforcement mechanism with that trade resolution, meaning uncertainty will still remain out there, I think that's going to continue to weigh on business confidence. And if we get more tariffs, potentially weigh on consumer confidence, both of which could lead to lower economic growth and maybe a recession. All right, Jeff, as always, thank you so much for joining us at Market Site. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.